Let's get over to our man, Mr. Tim Ord, as we do every Tuesday and Thursday. And don't forget, folks, you can reach Tim every trading day at Ord, R-D hyphen Oracle.com. That's Ord hyphen Oracle.com. Tim Ord, what's going on, brother? Well, we did have uh, panic yesterday. Uh, and we... So uh, yes, no, go ahead. we can look at the yeah we can look at those charts. Uh, um, chart one, uh, actually, uh, chart one. You know, the, the the top window is the ten day average of the trend. Yes, I said this in the past. Uh, in the ten day, which is basically two weeks of trend readings on the close, gets around one point two or higher. Normally, you're going into a low. Sometimes it goes way past one point two. Yes, or I think Friday we closed at one point two one. Yesterday we closed at one point two. So anyhow, that meets uh, met the parameters, and the bottom window is that two day trend we talked about. Yes. So uh, the two day trend needs to be one point five or higher. That's the average, or, or in other words, uh, the two day trend needs to add up to three. Yes. And uh, uh, yesterday I think it was it was three one six. Yeah, I, I had three. I had one point. Uh, I, it was what one point five four and one point four six. I got three anyway. Yeah. Well, that was yeah. You got three. yeah. That was not. Let's see. Because yesterday yeah, was one so point. Yeah. It was the two days prior to that. Yeah. Right. Exactly. Right. Right. So you know that worked out. Then next window up. Um, you know the that uh, was kind of. The third window down is a 21-day trend. Okay. And it uh, closed yesterday, 1.07. So that's a month of trading, and that's the one you really like to have up in the, the 1.2 or higher range because that's a longer-term bottom indicator. These other two, uh, two indicators are more shorter-term. But still, you got enough panic, at least on a short-term basis, is just a bottom. But I, I said before, I think we're in a trading range here. Yes. And the reason... Uh, one of the reasons why is because the, the the 21 day trend, which is a longer term trend, proje that projects at least a month rally, if not, you know, a lot of times a 21 day trend at 1.2 or higher, a lot of times they come at major lows, you know, uh, and we don't have that here. So I think, you know, a rally is starting. Let's flip to chart two. Can I just ask you a question first? Because I, I, I believe yeah. what you're saying is this. Because of the 21-day trend, because we didn't get to 1.2, you're looking for a rally, but not a major low. Would that be correct? Yeah. Okay, cool. Well, uh, I, I'm thinking, well, I, I think we could be at a, a, a significant low. And at the worst case, I don't think there's more downside than the current than what we saw yesterday. I just think we're going to go back up and maybe come back down to this current low sometime in the next month. Or right, two. I got it. That's cool. what I'm thinking. Yep, I got it. So okay. I, I think this is more of a sideways market. It went a little bit deeper than I thought it'd go. But, you know, sometimes they shoot over, you know, they oh, yeah. shoot over yeah. below some important areas. So, but yeah, let's look at chart two. Okay. And this is all the, the short term stuff. And yeah, the yes. bottom one's a three day. Next window up is a two-day average of the trend. Next window up is a five-day average of the trend. Top window is a 10-day average of the trend. And all those, you know, two, three, five, and 10 days all hit in bullish territory yesterday. So you had a pretty, you know, a worthwhile time frame for hit, a, you know, at least a, a low that may, you know, last a month, you know, maybe, I don't think two months, maybe, you know, I think this rally will probably go into September. And from there, I don't know. Uh, but you got enough panic to get things going. Um, here's another indicator. On, on, I might go a little bit too fast here, but no, let's sorry. look at three. Okay, I'm ready. Here we go. Yep. So, you know, we got panic in the market. You know, that's we proved that by the, the trends and yes. several different moving averages. And this one's starting to, to uh, is a zwag breath thrust indicator. It's a, it's a mouthful. But we talked about this before. Matter of fact, we talked the last time we talked about that was basically April. Yes, and uh, um, uh, yeah, you know, it, it did didn't didn't quite meet the parameters. But the the definition of the the Zwag breast thrust indicator is the uh, advancing issues over total issues with a ten day average. And uh, to get this thing triggered, you need a reading below forty. And yesterday, uh, we did have 
four, 0.40 right on the money. And within 10 days, it needs to get above 0.6 or get to 0.6 or higher. Okay. And it has to happen in 10 days. So you have to have panic in the advanced decline or advance compared to total volume. Yes. Then you have to have a sign of strength to get to 0.6 uh, within 10 days, two weeks. And so you get a, a panic situation, then a kind of like a buying situation. Right. Uh, and that's what comes at major lows. Sometimes you'll get two, three, four of them. Sometimes you just get one. Uh, so we may be working on one right now. Uh, you know, it depends on this current rally. So in the next 10 days from August 5th, that would be, uh, be, uh, well, yeah, yeah, started yesterday. So it would be uh, August 19th. Okay. Would be, be the date that this reading on this wag breath stress indicator need to get 0. 0.6. Now, if it does, chances are you're looking at another significant low again, similar to what we had in the past when this indicator triggered. And how high is high, you don't know, but, you know, chances are we could probably break new highs. Sometimes you get, you know, if you go back and look in the 19 or 2020 area we had and part of 2023, that, that bottom area, we had three in that area which is really a, a extremely bullish signal, but the market kind of just flips sideways. I think something may similar happen here because I'm actually pretty bullish. I think, you know, um, you'll, you'll see uh, new highs, you know, later this year, but between now and October, I think you may go back up, you may come back down, test this low, then the real rally maybe starts in October is what I'm thinking. Yeah, and so, if this is a trading range, man, it's one heck of a trading range, which is awesome. Yeah, it, it, <laughs> yeah. yeah it, it really is. I mean, it's, uh, you know, my subscribers, uh, we're up about 20% this year, and the market's up about half that. All right, and, and you, you went long on the close last night, right? Yeah, I went on close last nice. night. Uh, nice move. my yeah. position last Friday. I could have waited another day, but I don't know. It's hard to, it's hard to you know, two days, 3%. That's hard to walk away from. No, no, so, for sure. But. Well, you, you know what's intriguing here, Tim, is that normally, you know, you get a downdraft. You know, okay, so let's say we got the downdraft. But in this particular downdraft, man, it was so fast, and we already come back 95 S&P points today. I can see that, you know, I mean, I understand, you know, the trend people got nervous, but it's like I just don't know how many people actually got, uh, you know, they got sold out of the market yesterday. You know what I mean? Because we come yeah. back so quick. You know what I mean? Yeah, I think we're actually we're going to talk about cool. the bottom here. So when we come back, okay, so. you stay right there, folks. Tim and I are coming right back. Dow's up five fifty, Nasdaq's up two ninety, S and P's are up ninety two. We'll come right back, folks. Welcome back, folks. Uh, Tim Wood, Tom O'Brien. We do appreciate your growling and prowling with us out here. We have the Dow up five fifty, Nasdaq's up two eighty, S and P's are up ninety, and I have the third chart up, Tim. Right. Okay. Well, yeah, this is a, a chart to watch. So it, you know. Uh, two weeks from now, uh, August 19th, we're up 0. 0.6. That gives quite a bit of credit that the market's going to hit new highs before the year's out. That's what I'm going to use this indicator for. But, you know, we can go straight up, hit 0. 0.6 on this indicator, and the market, you know, tests the previous highs and come straight back down again. That would have reinforce the idea this market is probably in a, a trading range. Well, we go back down to yesterday's low, I'm not sure, but it could be kind of violent going back and forth here. So um, nice. right now I, I, I think there's a, a good chance of a V bottom. So let's flip to chart four is the reason why I okay. brought that up. Uh, we talked about this chart in the past. This is the uh, SPX tilt ratio. So this is the whole market. You got the equity market and you got the bond market. So that's you know trillions of dollars here yes. that you're looking at. So I use a ratio because the bond market is like what a hundred times bigger than the equity. I don't know what it is. Yeah, no, it is. It's a hundred times bigger. Yeah, it's trillions. It's right. I, I yeah. don't know what number it is, but it's huge. So anyhow, yeah, I did a ratio and I messed around with it. And anyhow, I come up with an RSI 10, not a 14, but an RSI 10. And when this ratio, RSI, falls below 30, usually you're at some sort of a low. A lot of times, you know, they're, they're a lot of times multi-week lows. Sometimes, you, you know, they're multi-month lows. But it does help define 
really panic on his short-term situation. But what's what's different about what the current uh, the RSI yesterday hit 14 on the on the uh, 10 period SPX tilt ratio. So that's pretty unusual. So I went back in time and looked at other times, went back to 2015. And a lot of times when you get down around that 14 RSI reading on this ratio, it's a V bottom. I see. Okay. So not all of them, but that's, you know, I kind of eyeball it. It's probably at least maybe three or four more. But, you know, 20, 20, 30 of them will. So about 80% chance, I'll put it that way, that yesterday's low on a short-term basis is probably not going to be tested because of this RSI getting so low. So they really dumped on this ratio really hard yesterday. And it's, it's a short-term bullish sign. It's actually one of the reasons why I stepped in the market yesterday because it's hard to get very few very few readings get to around 14 or lower. I see. So it was just, it was pushed too hard to the downside. Plus, you had the trend readings and all this other stuff. All right. So, uh, we got, I thought, you know, we'd, we'd go up, come back down. This is a base building period. But I, I'm thinking yesterday's low, we're going to have a rally first, then maybe come back later, maybe September, October, we visit this low again. But uh, so. Okay, cool. Hey, so we go up here, so it'll be something to watch for. Hey, let me ask you: we so, got we got a pretty cool question here, I think, about some of your ratios, right? And what the question is is this: they uh, let me just go through this first. Uh, can you ask him about the VIX slash VVIX ratio and the TLT slash VIX ratios? So, what the question is, Tim, uh, is that this trade is saying using live data. I have them both taking out the 2024 and 2023 lows, and the TLT VIX ratio is below everything but the COVID low. So what the, what the trader's question is, is this. If these indicators take out all those swing lows, does that anticipate that the market would catch up and do the same? Well, yesterday's, I think the VIX didn't get to 60 yesterday, interday. 85, if that's uh, it, I think. Yeah. 85, okay. Uh, um, I think. The VIX is, you know, another panic. You know, I, I did a lot of stuff with the VIX. Yes. And I, I do that, you know, SPX VIX ratio. And I think I did that tilt VIX ratio uh, thing also. I, I don't have Oh, 65. Sorry, 65. Frame. It was 65. Uh, I'll have to look, you know, actually. I'll look at it Thursday. Okay, so, cool. Awesome. Thank you. That's awesome. All right. So, so is this is VIX tilt ratio? Yeah, he's or looking the at the, around? let me just get the, the, the question so I get it. The, the, the VIX slash the VVIX. Remember, you know, you get the VIX then divided by the oh, VVIX. VVIX, yeah, VIX. yeah. Yeah, I think I looked at that one too. Yeah, you know, you have, because you've, you've, you've brought that to us in, in the past. Okay, cool. That'd be awesome if you do that. Thank you. All right. Then what? Then you, then you had a VIX tilt ratio too. Or yes. Something? Then we then then he was he had the question about the um, uh, the TLT slash VIX ratios. What he's saying is that they took out the lows of 2024 and 2023, and not the COVID low. What he what he's I, I believe what he's saying is that okay, if they took out the lows, would you expect the market to go take out lows too? You know, would the market catch up with it and do the same thing? Oh, okay. Yeah. Uh, a little bit. That's a different question, right? I mean, I, I, you know, because. Yeah, everybody's kind of bearish here. I, 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 uh, so I, I don't know. I, I think that the downtrend's over. You know, I think the worst case scenario is a test yesterday's low. But I'll take a look at that. Cool. Yeah, that. no, that's cool. I think I, I was messing around with those ratios and I didn't come up with. Yeah, you know, sometimes you stare at them for a while, and all of a sudden it pops out. Yeah, this is good information. <laughs> I love it. Yeah, it's it's a yeah, fact. <laughs> yeah, it doesn't. Yeah, I can't figure it out. But so, hey, cool. let's look at the gold market real quick. Okay, let's do that. Here, I got the next one up. Okay, I'm ready. All right. This these two. Uh, I'm doing a lot of stuff because it works. Is is the cumulative advanced decline and a cumulative up down volume. For GDX, and I got on the on the the monthly, which gave a bicycle on May 31st. And I got on the weekly, which gave a bicycle on March 18th, and uh, so I kind of looked at the daily, and, and and the Bollinger Band seems to work really well. 
but it, it's good on the daily. So the, the charter number five looks at the daily, and it does really good on divergences. Uh, the the pink area, uh, last divergence we had December of 2024, the GDX, which is the top one, was making higher highs, and both those ratios are making lower highs. That predicted a short-term high. Then in, then May through July of this year, uh, GDX was falling back down, and both those ratios went sideways. And now the current blue, or uh, the light blue area, uh, GDX fell down, and both those ratios went sideways. Yes. So to me, this is positive divergence. If you notice those ratios, uh, uh, the up down volume of all the uh, of uh, the up down volume works better than advanced decline. I don't know why it just does because it, it gives the most true signals. But it made higher lows yesterday, or, or t- yesterday and today, and uh, an advanced decline made uh, match the previous low. So even though the GDX has fallen back down, the ratios are actually. Um, Dailies are giving a positive divergence here. So I think both markets, what I'm saying, is, are probably going to go up here, the equity market and the gold market. Yeah, so. it's pretty amazing. You know, yesterday in the downdraft, you know, yeah, you had the gold equities, you know, go down at the open with everyone else. But, the, man, they came right back. I mean, they gapped down and then they came back. And they were strong, man. I mean, they were strong yeah. for a market that was down 1,100 points. Let's put it that way. Stay right there, there, folks. Tim and I are coming right back. We have the Dow up 451, NASDAQ up 252, S&P's up 77. Tim and I are coming right back, folks. Welcome back, folks. Uh, Dow. Dow's uh, up 370, NASDAQ's up 213, S&P's up 64. So I just jumped to the last chart, Tim. All right. So the, the daily charts are, are positive versions. And this is kind of a repeat. Uh, this is that we, we talked back in uh, this the bottom window is the uh, monthly up down volume. Next window higher is yes. the monthly advanced decline. Both of them are cumulative. And as long as those two indicators remain above the mid Bollinger band, you got a, a trending market. So, in general, you know, the, the, the correction phase is done that, that this indicator gave a sell zone back in January 2021, flipped to a bicycle on May 31st of 2024, chances are we're going to, in general, move higher over the next year and a half because that's the average time or longer. Uh, the average minimum time of this type of signal was a year and a half. So this was probably going to go into, uh, what's that, uh, November of, of 2025. We can get our so, head wrapped around that, man. <laughs> yeah, so you're going to have, you know, you're not going to have large corrections. You're, you're going to pretty much just be impulse. It's going to be an impulse wave. If this is, you know, month to month, you know, not every yes. month's going to be up, but you're not going to have any 40, 40% corrections or anything. You may have 10 or 15% corrections. But in general, you're going to move higher. And the bullish percent index for the gold miners index is up around 80%. So 80% of the stocks we on buy signals, so that should continue for a long time. So I'm thinking this is going to be similar to the, the 2000 low, uh, because these signals are pretty rare. And we also and, got, uh, so. you know, Tim, let me ask you this. Um, you know, about three or four months ago, remember, I, I forgot whether it was the Zag uh, indicator, but we had got an indicator, one of your indicators, that like next year, I mean, it was, well, this coming year was supposed to be really strong, right? Uh, yeah. Yeah, come, yeah, cool, man. Cool. Yeah. Well, yeah, this, is, this should be a real, uh, everything's going to move. The, the, little, the penny ones that are they're not quite bankrupt, they're going to come back. I think it's, it's, it's going to be a good, you know, it's going to be good. Well, thanks so. so much, man. We'll talk to you Thursday. Folks, have a great right, one. Good. Have a safe one. I'll come right back when we'll do the update.